I consider it a serious blessing to have been able to grow my business the way I have. God's been incredibly good to me. And to be able to have cool stuff like this, to be able to use at your house. So what we're doing is we're, we're filling in this my irrigation line. And uh, Leah, come take that rake. And rake that dirt back in that hole right there. Come on, keep going. Tough, ain't it? I'm gonna try. It's hard, ain't it? Come right here and do this side. Where I went over it with the elevator. A little bit easier, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Daddy taught me to work smarter, not harder. So we brought the elevator out here and got the kids out here. We're gonna fill in this trench today. And uh, Jax is going to help too. Now you can take the rake and push that. Yep. Leave it right in the middle. Yep. Bingo. Just like that. And that dirt will settle over the next month. If it rains on it, it'll settle down. And then we can go back over and rake it and smooth it up. Well, some more. Rain. Huh? Well, if, it well, if it don't rain, it'll probably stay like it. It'll still settle, but not quite as much. But um. anyway. We're gonna get with it. Yeah, ants. Oh yeah, they're all over the place. Look at that. That's yeah. nasty. It's an ant, man. Mm-hmm. Jax, get your shovel and put some hole, dirt in that, that hole. That hole is that white pipe. We want, we want to cover that pipe up. Get some of this dirt. Scoop it in there. That's right.
That looks good. That's a lot easier with that soft dirt in it. You still ain't getting it off the edge of the grass. I need a clean line through there. No, it ain't hard. You just have to put a little effort in it. No, you don't tear up the grass. Watch. You take the teeth of the rake and stick it right on the edge of the grass. Like that. I'm not, I'm using one hand and I'm, I'm barely, I mean, look. It ain't nothing but the weight of the rake doing it. Come and try it. <coughs> it's like that. You ain't got to muscle it and push it down. Use two. You need two hands. Grab the rake down here on the end. Now pick up on the rake just a touch when you do it. Like a like a quarter of an inch, just a touch. Yeah, uh, there it went. You just did it. Now push that little bit of dirt over. Not in the grass, Goofy, this ridge right here you just made. Like this. Look. See? Simple. Come here. Correct way to use a shovel. Come here. Are you looking? See these two feet? Places to put your feet? You don't want it straight up. You don't want it way back. Kind of at, a, at an angle. Foot on. All right, see how I got it down in the ground? Mm -hmm. The handle does two things. If one, it lets you carry the shovel or tote the dirt with it. It also acts as a leverage. Look, see how I pull it back? Mm -hmm. Look at the ground, just pop right up. Just like that. Oh yeah, there's plenty of them in here. Look at the habitat. What are you gonna name him? I'm gonna name him Bob. Triple threat. Triple threat. Take triple threat. Hey triple threat. Okay, so this is Bob. I'm gonna get a frame. <laughs> if I can find one. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Oh, there's so this is my last manifold I need to make for my irrigation system. This one is specifically for my flower beds, my annual flowers. I love flowers, love changing out the colors from summer stuff to uh, pansies in the winter, uh, violas, uh, cardoons, that kind of thing. Uh, I, just, I just like to mix up the colors uh, for the season. And uh, it, that's just something you can do to your property to kind of you know, change it up during the season kind of add some color um, in different places but I've got several beds I've got one two three four five six separate flower beds and uh, this zone will go to a micro mist system <clears throat> there and then this zone is going to go to all my big cryptomeria in the back because uh, they're only four years old and they have almost tripled in size in four years. That's because I feed them on a consistent basis. And this little get up is kind of uh, giving away one of my little tricks as to how I do that. <clears throat> so it's called fertigation. And basically what fertigation is, is you have an irrigation system and in line, in, in, the, in the line somewhere, you would add a siphoning uh, system uh, or a siphoning contraption. I don't know what you call it. But anyway, the water flows through here. And you can see the two, the, these little uh, nipples here. The water gets pushed up through the nipple, goes through a line, goes into a container that has a concentrated fertilizer in it and it pushes it back into the other nipple sending it through so there what it's doing is as you're putting out water it's dropping out a micro dose of you know, whatever uh, mainly nutrients fertilizers organics uh, humic acid fulvic acid stuff like that you do not dare want to run a herbicide through this um, 
it's just too risky because you can't control exactly where the water hits. So any, any type of fertigation, I would recommend just doing strictly a nutrient uh, application. So what you need for the job is uh, your primer. Of course, this is all common knowledge with the, your cement, uh, with the uh, pipe fitting PVC. You need some cutters to cut the PVC. You need some PVC pipe. You need your different fittings, elbows, tees, unions, or whatever it may be. Uh, you need a good glass of peach sweet tea, which is incredibly good. I use the Lipton Southern style sweet tea and uh, boil three tea bags uh, in two gallons of water and do a cup and a half of sugar and it's just some kind of good. Um, so you take your PVC and you put your glue on the outside, I mean the uh, cleaner, excuse me, put your cleaner on the, the, the pipe and you also put the cleaner on the inside of the, the nipple or the fitting. Get you a little glue. This is something I like to be pretty liberal with. Um, you know, you don't want this thing leaking. After you put it in, go in here with the glue, glue that up. And you basically kind of twist it on a little bit. And voila there you go I like to kind of give it hold it a little bit sometimes it likes to push out so when putting valves together you know an electrical current is going to come through and open this valve and you want to make sure your valves are free to where they can open and don't bump into each other uh, and of course it's not going to work right so the fertigation <coughs> You see I made a boo-boo here, I measured wrong. This is the actual length of the injector tube and you see I had to cut some off. I, I measured wrong down here, but uh, I think that's gonna work. I guess I'll know when I put the water pressure to it. If it leaks, I'll have to redo it. So, main line. This is the main water line that has constant pressure on it from the well. Uh, you see the video on the well install on my page and so this has got constant pressure uh, you set the irrigation timer and say you want this to run at 2 a.m. at 2 a.m. it sends an electrical current opens this valve sends the water to that particular zone and sprays out waters whatever alright so when I want to feed my flowers I basically I'll come in here and I'll cut this off and reroute the main water supply around here and then it goes in that way it catches my uh, my fertigation system and when I don't want to use because I don't do this all the time it's just maybe once a month um, so I just don't I, and the reason I didn't just put this in line is because my well has a pretty good pressure on it I just didn't want constant, this is just a quarter inch uh, pipe, it's really small, I didn't want constant pressure on this the entire time, because when, when the zone isn't running, when the irrigation isn't running, these are off, and this pipe is pressurized with uh, 70 PSI, so that's a lot of pressure on those two little nipples, so I only wanted to be able to use this when I'm actually using the fertigation putting product on the flowers. So when I don't want it, I just cut those two off, open that main line back up, and voila. So, for the test, of course I've already done my measurements on this. And it all came out right. So 
what I'll do is I'll, I'll use this existing hole down here and run a piece of PVC so this doesn't get covered up with dirt. This line is hard trying to do this with one hand. I'm trying to make a good video, so I'm sorry about this. This line will go through the box underground and hook into here, just like so. This thing has a metering system on it. It can go from slow, setting one, setting two, and then fast. And that's just how fast it draws the product out of here. This product, this one, I like this one. I've been using these things for years, but it's been a smaller one that you hit the roof pipe. It's called Easy Flow Fertilize Responsibility. Responsibly. Fertilize responsibly. Easy flow. It's a really cool system. This is the two and a half gallon unit. These boxes will be underground just like so. And so when I want to feed my uh, flowers, I just basically come out and unscrew this top, put my concentrates down in there. And I think off of, uh, I have to go out and read. They've got the numbers, but the slow setting, you can actually feed for about four weeks on this. That's not my intention. If I feed the flowers, I put just, you know what I want in here. If I'm going to put a gallon and a half of uh, whatever, like a miracle Grow fertilizer or whatever, um, I would set it on fast. That way I go and put all the fertilizer out in one, one cycle of irrigation, and it gets watered in all at the same time. The next day before I go to work or whatever, I come out and change my valves up. That way uh, I'm no longer using the fertigation part. So um, this, this is really cool stuff, man. It takes a lot of labor out, a lot of work out. You don't have to actually you know, fertilize them by hand. It's kind of a way to spoon feed them. And um, I am going to be installing a very large unit on my yard uh, it'll be in the the main main line back at out at the well and uh, it's going to be like a I think I'm gonna go with a five gallon unit because I would net my yard 17,000 square foot so I would never put anything more than five gallons on it at one time whether it be calcium or uh, yeah, you can run some nitrogen through here, some liquid nitrogen for, for the yard. The only problem with that is, is putting out liquid nitrogen, the coverage, or excuse me, the application needs to be much more even than your irrigation is going to apply it. Needs to be put out by hand off of what, like a permagreen sprayer or a hand sprayer. Uh, off a spray truck I, I don't think I'll ever run nitrogen through this uh, just because the irrigation overlaps too much in certain places and if it does that you're going to get some serious streaking in the yard so I don't think I'm going to go that route with it but organics, humic acids compost tea uh, gosh I'm drawing a blank I've got 2,000 things at the shop that we can, that we can use on yards. I'm, I'm, it's been a long day and I'm drawing a blank. Um, organics being the main thing. Humic acids, stuff like that. Compost tea, worm casting juice is incredibly good for a yard. Oh my gosh, the grass loves that stuff. Where they take worm castings and turn it into a liquid and then you go apply it to the turf. Uh, that would be something good to run through here. Anything you want to get watered in really good. No pre-emergence, no weed controls. Because I don't care how good your irrigation is, I'm sure at some point it's going to hit a bush or a tree or get in the root system of a tree or something. So you want nothing but nutrients run through this type of thing. Herbicides just shouldn't be done like that. So I uh, hope this has been cool. Um, it's a pretty neat setup. I've got the hole dug out there in the yard, but it's full of water because it has been raining like crazy. I cannot believe it. it just it, 
Go figure, the year I decided to put an irrigation system in, uh, it rains like every other day. So I guess it's helping all the neighbors out, which I'm thankful for. So anyway, uh, I'll be back later, and we'll get this thing in the ground and hook it up to the main line. And The well has power to it. The well is pumping water out. And I've got to go out there and hook all that up, and I'm going to show you a trick out there how to install a, a bleed system. Uh, so when you want to winterize your irrigation, it makes it incredibly easy. It's basically using an air chuck, an air fitting, and you would basically take your air tank out and uh, plug this part of the air tank in. And then turn your turn your uh, you know you would this is it's going to be in line in the PVC and you'll plug this into the fitting and then you basically cut your water off at the well and then you huh you you put you see I told you it's been a long day cut off at the well this will plug into the uh, air chuck in line. And then you basically turn the pump on, this air compressor on, and you go out and you manually open your valves, like so. You just reach down the box and turn it, and then the air pushes all the water out. So over winter, you have nothing but air in the lines, and of course you leave the valves open, so it can't even build up pressurized air. So it's really cool. Um, I... I don't, I don't know if that's the correct way to do it, but it's the way I'm going to do it because it's just the idea I come up with. So we'll see how it works. But anyway, uh, have a good one, and we'll check you next time.